Good afternoon, my name is Jim Collin and welcome to the latest edition of our Cult Classic Disc Series. As you know, for the month of May, we're looking at Starsky and Hutch, uh, which ran from 1974 to 1979. We're looking at guest stars who have appeared in the classic and why it still resonates to them. Their memories of working on set on Starsky and Hutch and obviously working with the two <coughs> lead characters, uh, David Soul and Paul Michael Glazier. Our guest this evening is Mill Cogan, who appeared in Starsky and Hutch uh, during that time. Uh, he guest starred in a role in Starsky and Hutch. And uh, Milt, uh, I know we're looking back roughly around 50 years. Uh, it's, first of all, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. I uh, know, first of all, we're looking back around 50 years, but when you close your eyes and uh, get a bit of quiet time and you look back at some of the things you've done throughout your career, uh, just remember Starsky and Hutch and your time on set with that with fond memories? Oh, absolutely. It, uh, it was its first season. It was an episode called, uh, uh, I think, Death Notice. Okay. And so they weren't sure whether they were going to be a success or not. So they were a little nervous, but they were such attractive young guys. Uh, and we had a show where we, I was the uh, owner of a strip joint. So okay. the whole week was, we were surrounded by half naked women. It was a real pleasure, but I'll never forget the show. And I suppose that uh, left you with a sort of a sweet tooth, uh, no doubt, uh, Mills. And uh, working uh, on set in terms of uh, Starsky and Hutch, uh, you mentioned season one. Uh, was it a slick operation to begin with? Oh, yeah. The, these guys in Hollywood can do these things. Just, you know, just click it off. They, you know, I, I, I did about 150 shows, about 40 guest stars in my career. And uh, these shows run for about a week. Uh, and you just do the show. They move at a certain clip. It's not like doing a movie. There's a clip to it. And the guys who do it have done that clip so many times. And I uh, was a guest star in so many uh, cop shows and other kinds of shows. Uh, and it was always done routinely the same way so that I wouldn't know half the time whether I was on Starsky and Hutch or whether I was uh, on Heart and Heart or if I was on there were a lot of bromance uh, uh, series shows at that time. Two guys uh, solving all these crimes, uh, crimes. And uh, I would have, you know, three or four scenes. And maybe the next day I went to another show, uh, uh, Kojak or uh, <coughs> another show. And many times I couldn't remember what show I was on. You know what I mean? But Starsky and Hutch, I remember because those guys were so attractive and so much fun. And I suppose you mentioned um, Paul Mike Glazier and David Soul. Uh, what were your memories of meeting uh, them for the first time? Were the very humble, sort of down to earth guys who had enjoyed a bit of banter and crack off session in between shoots? Uh, yeah, except they were uh, a little uptight because. As I said, it was the first season. I don't remember uh, what week we were in my show, but uh, as I said, we were surrounded by naked women for a week. Uh, so of course we had many jokes and thoughts and uh, uh, the, the women were you know, fascinated by the guys because they're both such good looking guys. Uh, so it was fun, you know, it happened to be one of the shows that was really fun. Yeah, and I suppose, uh, Milt, in terms of uh, Starsky and Hutch, and you mentioned the, the episode Death Notice, and you played this sort of uh, strip giant order. Do you sort of enjoy playing those seedy type sort of characters that sort of, uh, there I say, the underworld sort of type? Well, let me just say that I have played many types. Uh, you should also know that I am an MD, I am a physician, so uh, who went to an Ivy League school, so I'm a bit of an intellectual, you'll have to excuse me for that. So 
I really enjoyed playing uh, some of these uh, you know, horrible characters. Uh, he wasn't a horrible character. He just, uh, his business was strip, uh, girls for a strip show. But I have played, you know, uh, I played characters that killed people on, stay, uh, on set. In fact, uh, a little story, if I may. I remember one time being in my office uh, as a physician. Uh, a guy uh, came in to see me that I, I hadn't seen before. And he says, Dr. Kogan, he says, uh, uh, I, I saw you last night on Kojak where you stabbed that guy in the back. I said, yeah. He says, it reminded me, he says, I have this cyst on my back. I was wondering if you would take it out today. You know, stuff like that would happen to me. And I suppose, uh, Milt, in, you mentioned there about Starsky and Hutch, and obviously each week, obviously, there's different props, uh, different sets. Uh, what did you find the sets back in the 1970s? Were they ahead of its time in terms of what they were able to roll out in terms of the studio lot and sort of such a, a quick sort of turnarounds as well? Well, uh, you have to remember that they had source companies, uh, Western Costume uh, was, was called in Hollywood. They had uh, uh, prop, prop companies, so anything that they ever wanted in a minute, uh, they could get. And if they couldn't, they would give you something that resembled that. And so uh, I, I never remember uh, missing uh, a, a prop or that a scene wasn't, a scene set wasn't done when I came on stage. You know, each, each, you know, each minute in Hollywood is a really, a, very expensive. It's not two minutes, you know, it's thousands and thousands of dollars. You forget your line, that that blows, you know, two or three thousand dollars. So they, they don't have time to play around. This is as professional uh, an occupation I've ever been in. Now I'm a farmer, I got my own farm. And uh, Milt, uh, in terms of you mentioned uh, Starsky and Hutch, and obviously it's a big show of its time, and you were on season one uh, in terms of having Starsky and Hutch, a cable uh, network uh, TV show on your resume, I suppose you were very much an established actor as well. Does it still open up doors and open up more opportunities for you back around that time as well? Anytime that people see you uh, in a guest star role, it reminds because they're searching desperately for talent for their shows. So anytime they see you, so if you you can be on a show uh, that has a wide audience, you certainly have a chance to be called for something else. And you have to remember at uh, uh, I, I don't know when the new uh, uh, channels came in, but when I started, first of all, it was all in black and white, and second of all, there were only three channels. So when you got into a show, you know, half the world saw that show, as opposed to now where there's a hundred shows. So if you even get a wonderful guest star on something, uh, the amount of people who see you today is not the same. And Milt, uh, I spoke to a previous uh, actress and she just, she told me that the directors of Starsky and Hutch actually informed her when her show was actually going to be screening on air. So she was very well aware of the date uh, it was coming out on TV. Was that a sort of similar experience for you? Did you know when your episode was going to air? Yes. Okay. Yes, I did. Okay. Now, I'm sure and it's I... the same way in Irish television, isn't it? Mm hmm Yes, uh, Starsky and Hutch has obviously it's been seen in Ireland uh, obviously throughout the years, but I'm just going back to the 1970s obviously and cable TV and sort of, uh, I suppose it's sort of infancy uh, as well in terms of being uh, informed about that, you know, some people in guest starring roles back in probably not as big shows as Starsky and Hutch probably would be finding out maybe in advertisements in papers or magazines when their show is about here. Uh, and not too much advertisement in uh, the mainstream uh, mainstream newspapers, uh, but uh, certainly the, the the 
television companies would uh, preview the show for a, a week or a few days before, uh, especially things like Star City and Hutch, where they were trying to build up audiences. So I might be watching something else and my show, uh, since I was a guest star, I would appear as well in the advertisement. And uh, it would, uh, you know, it'd be 10 times a day, you know, for five days. But the, they didn't take out many ads and newspapers as such. But on television, they did try to push their product. Okay. And Milt, in terms of the stunts team that worked uh, in Starsky and Hutch, uh, I've heard great things about it. Uh, did you do all your own? Was there any scenes that involved stunts in terms of your episode? And if so, did you do all your own stunts or did you have someone uh, doubling up for you? I, I played a very uh, meek, uh, meek uh, character in my, you know, involved with, with uh, stripping women. So there really wasn't uh, very much stunts for me. But I, of course, have been on many, many shows where the stunt guys and the stunt gals perform things for me and with me. Uh, and they're amazing. They were just amazing. And Milt, uh, if someone had to describe your character now uh, in terms of Starsky and Hutch, and they put him in a sort of a dictionary and they asked you, Milt Cogan, to write the two sentences uh, underneath his uh, description to describe what a type of a person he was, uh, what would you like those two sentences to read? Well, I think that... It is a guy who really cared about his uh, role in the uh, strip show industry, who cared seriously about the girls. Uh, as you recall, a couple of the girls in the show were killed. One of them happened to be a, a, a dear friend of mine, Susan Charney, who played a gal named Ginger in the show, and uh, Ross Kelly. Uh, played in other gals, and I think Ross got killed too. So, uh, you know, you get into the part, and you don't think of yourself as Milt Kogan, MD. You think of yourself as uh, the character and the feelings. The wonderful thing about uh, being an actor is that you get the, the character's feelings. So what was happening was important to me, and... Uh, uh, I love the opportunity of being able to be, even though this guy was a seedy character, uh, to understand him and uh, re relate to him on a personal level. And I suppose, uh, finally, Milt Cogan, before I let you go, uh, have you ever been to Ireland? And if so, have you any sort of memories to share with us? Or is it still something very much uh, on the book of this for you? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't understand, James. Okay, so Milt, I'm just saying finally before I let you go, have you ever visited Ireland before in the past? And uh, if not, is it something on the bucket list for you in terms of the future? And if you have visited Ireland, have you any sort of memories to share from your time? Uh, I have been to Ireland many times. Ireland was a very important symbol in my life. Uh, I... I I'm very well aware of the literature of Ireland and the struggles of Ireland against, uh, against England, for instance, and certainly the north and south of Ireland. And it's such a beautiful country. And the sat and being an actor, the sound of, of the voice and the speech is so great. And, and what happens in the small uh, bars in the little towns. Uh, has anyone ever visited Ireland that didn't didn't want to stay there? I don't think so. And your and your women are so beautiful. Uh, in fact, your your guys are so good looking with their dark eyes, and dark hair. It, it's an amazing place and <clears throat> has always been and is very important, as you know, Ireland and in our country. Uh, from, from, from John Kennedy to, to, to Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, we, we wouldn't be the country that uh, we are without the Irish immigration, uh, unfortunately, after a potato famine. But uh, still, 
Now we were richer, though you guys were poorer for it at the time. Uh, Milt Cogan, on that note, I had a glowing recommendation for Ireland. Uh, we leave it there at that for this evening. Thanks for taking your time, for sharing your memories of being in Starsky and Hutch, uh, your guest role in season one in Debt Noses, obviously playing that, that owner of that strip giant, a CD character. Thanks for sharing your memories of your interactions uh, with David Soul and Paul Michael Glazier. And uh, Thanks for being part of this documentary and wish you all the best in the near future. Take care. Uh, Thank Bill you Coven. so much, John. Very kind of you. Thank you.